Europe's. I was supposed to do Europe's Strongest Man on the 90. It makes me laugh a little bit because some of you are more interested in and, and follow my kind of training more than my coaching side. And I sometimes forget and I, I do appreciate the messages and the support and stuff. I had a real bad time in terms of training. Those of you that have been following a while know my knee's been an issue for like two years now. And I was just compensating and shifting into my left leg and I ended up tearing my left hamstring about eight weeks out. I tried to rehab it, but then I tore it again about four weeks out on a sandbag. And then I tore it the next week again on a log. It was just a clusterfuck of things. It was literally the second week of the, the prep I blew my hamstring. And it's because I couldn't drive through my right leg properly. I'm shifting to the left. I fucked it. Now it's been a couple of weeks since then. Basically, I've started a new protocol, new supplement protocol, supplement, and it is working fantastic. And I'm gonna call this the actual start of the comeback. Kinda of fucked it up for the Europe's, but training has been going over the last two or three weeks really well. And since starting my new protocol, look at this. My knee, it's like new. It's the best thing ever. Don't DM me asking for me secrets either because I can't be telling you all this because there are some things that you can't just chuck out into the strongman scene because then everybody will take it without knowing what the fuck they're doing. But whatever I've done, secret sauce is going real well. I feel like this is the one. I'm not hip shifting anymore. I'm not compensating. Everything's sweet. So goal, the uh, goal short term is uh, I need to just get back on the saddle and compete. So I'm going to look for a local show, looking for like an Inters 105 type vibe, opens comp. I'll look for something where the weights are kind of just what I want. I had big FOMO at Europe. You know, watching everybody compete and knowing what I can do at my best. I really wished I could yeah, showcase my what I'm able to put together as a performance, especially because I've always been a comp day lifter that just, just does things. I do things in comps where I'm like, how the fuck do I do that? I mean, I've not had any of them moments for years. And then hopefully next Next year, do the England's, Britons, and that kind of pathway. I'm sorry, under night lads, but I just got I want to clean up, I'll be honest with you. I feel like it's my time now. I feel like over the last three years I've been in the best shape of my life. I've just been hindered by this knee, and now that I've fixed that, fingers crossed. Yeah, I can't fucking wait to get cracking, to be honest with you. Oh, it's gonna be wild. It's gonna be good times. Prep there where I did 60 seconds sprint on the bike, followed by some rotational ball slams. It's just to get a little bit of blood into my quads. And even though my knees like fine at the moment, touch wood, it just helps. Like the first couple of first 10, 20 seconds, I could feel 0.5 out of 10 sensation, not even pain in it. And then by the second round it goes. And the rotational ball slams are just there. Just to excite the nervous system a little bit. I'm getting some QL, some oblique, some hip internal rotation. Getting a lot of benefits from the rotational ball slams. I'm landing in a mid-stance position with a contralateral slam, which is uh, facilitating hip internal rotation and the movement of getting full shoulder flexion and obviously slamming the ball is great for just uh, my scapular relative motion and it's just a really good warm-up gets your heart rate elevated and nervous system excited ready to go into the deadlift something I've been doing a little bit of recently before each session I don't usually like messing on bumper plates but I'm training at CrossFit at a minute Bumper plates are weird, like I don't class them. I don't know, in my head, I call them 10 kilos lighter than they are. Cause uh, if you're not lifting on camera, I mean, this, I've got some Alecos on there, so that's like the set weight. That, that 20 kilo bike's on there throws me off. I don't like lifting on the bison bumpers and shit because, I don't know. It just feels different to calibrated, uh, you know, plates. If you, uh, if you know, you know, if you don't know, you don't know. I spent years lifting on uh, bumpers and you know, normal like 20 kilo uh, iron cast plates and when I started lifting on calibrated you suddenly feel weak because those 500 grams per plate that you know that they don't have you know most 20s are 19.5 you stack a fucking load of them on and suddenly you're 10 50 kilo down so you lift on calibrated you feel like a bitch so I don't use it light lifting but because I'm in rehab still and I'm just reloading I'm gonna do a couple of weeks deadlifting here but then I probably will have to move to Hicks's or Josh's when I start lifting heavy because I said, don't, don't, don't want to go to a comp and it feel, you know, completely different to training. Uh, but today, for the next couple of weeks, should be fine on these little bitch plates. So we're going to go for this uh, <coughs> 2.30 for 7. I'd be happy if I get this because I feel rattled after that Europe's weekend. My hips are mashed, my traps are like overactive. I feel like Flash Dan walking around like fucking Robocop. I'm beltless and this is the heaviest I've deadlifted for just over two months. Getting all my excuses in now. No, I'm not excuses, I'm not doing it easy. It's just, uh, this is me kind of like at my worst right now, I guess. So I'm hoping this will give me an, an idea as to where my bottom end is on my worst days because it ain't getting any worse than this. I've been reloading my injury, not training five, six days and running around 30k steps at Europe a day. So yeah, we'll see what happens.
like I said, I knew the seven was going to be kind of easy, but uh, just thought I'd pop out ten. Nice to get to that point where you feel your muscles get a little closer to failure. I probably had two more in me at most. On the video, I probably said I got 20 more because I'm just a fast lifter. <laughs> but yeah, I was about to hit the wall. So yeah, it was good to feel it though because you know, it's nice when you come back from an injury. That first set that you push, you want to have like even stimulus through both whatever you injured. So in my case, both hamstrings should be just as pumped and just as worked after the set rather than one taking over or even the injured side fatiguing quicker because it's not had a chance to fully recover yet and gets work capacity back. I've been doing lots of eccentric glute ham raises and hamstring curls and RDLs as my rehab, so I was hoping they'd be fine, and it was. It feels really weird squatting because I've lifted so long, but because I'm not squatted in, it's about two years since I've probably squatted. I did a little bit of a prep for a powerlifting comp about a year ago or something, but I wouldn't even consider that a prep because it was just, that was just so much pain. I was just like trying to find positions that didn't hurt. But now, like, I unwrap the bar, I don't, I don't know what my stance is, I don't know how wide I was. It's like I've forgotten. So, yeah, it just feels really strange. Not felt this sensation for a decade or something, I don't fucking know. So I'm just in a relearning process. Put my Ollie shoes on for the first time today as well, which give me a little bit more flexion. So I'm gonna stay nice and light. About 90 kilo I'm hoping to do. And then we just reload from there, re relearn, reload. I'm really happy with that because the Ollie shoe puts me in a bit more knee flexion. So it's a little bit harsher on the knees. About six, eight weeks ago, if I'd have gone away to London for just a day, walking around, etc. The next day, my knee had been swollen, I wouldn't be able to walk for a week. That's happened loads of times. Like going to watch a Giants live show for one day, I can't walk probably for a week. So, been away for three or four days, back the next day to be squatting with about one out of ten pain. Like I say, it's not perfect, but it's, it's fucking, it's nothing, guys, I've done it. Uh, huge win, and in the Ollie shoe, the control of the eccentrics. I'm really happy because uh, this like this is going to be the worst ever going to be now. So we just build from here. Uh, can't wait to be squatting 300 kilo plus again because it's been a while since I've had 200 kilo on my back, let alone 300 kilo. The reason why I put farmers on this day is just to be accountable so that I can do it every week. Don't really have a goal or anything with it to be honest with you. I'm just constantly chipping away with my hand to try and get it back to. But basically. Those you don't know, I've had my hand reconstructed, so it's fucked, my left hand's fucked, so it's always one of them where it's, it's, not, it's not really gonna budge too much, it's fucked. My goal really is just to keep chipping away, and if I can progress five kilo every couple of months, we're winning, aren't we? But really, it's always this weird game because my right hand can hold, well, I don't know, I don't know how much it can hold, a lot more than my left. Uh, so I'm always, like, it's a weird one for me farmers, it's not that taxing on my body because the expression of strength that I can put into the implement is severely limited by the left hand. So it means that neurologically, I can't, ex I can't extract as much strength through the movement. It even holds my running speed back with lighter weights because if I try and sprint too much, it obviously like moves your hand a little bit and it'll just open my hand up. So yeah, it's a bit of a clusterfuck of uh, problems to be honest with you, but like I said, no goal, just chip it away and I do it this day so that I can't, I can't skip it. Three things to do on this day really, dead, squat and farmers. So pretty easy sesh really. So I'm just gonna start with a couple of 40 meter sets at 80 kilo today, nice and light, and then uh, just progress from there. All right, so that was session one done. Dead squats, farmers, bit of hip flexors, abs and tibs to finish. Pretty low intensity, easy one back. Obviously, Europe, as I've moaned about, body's rattled, but super, super happy with the starting point. Basically, throughout my strength training life, I've kind of peaked different things at different times, and I'm hoping that it all comes together as one big package. And I can't wait to present it and perform on a, a big stage now that the under 90 scene has got a bit of a platform for official strongman to actually go out and perform in front of people instead of, you know, fucking free people in a field and my mum. That's usually where I did my mad shit. So yeah, I can't wait to continue this training cycle, finish it off, take a few local comps off first and then get myself on official strongman. So keep following, we'll try and put some more training videos up as we go and uh, yeah, hopefully you'll learn some stuff along the way.